This is my Maho MHC 700 milling machine. It's a fairly early generation one, so it looks very much like a hand operated milling machine, except that it's had added on servos and controller. It's a um, four axis machine, so it's got an X, a Y, and a Z, and a rotary table here, which is the main platen. Here we have a Heidenhain TNC 155 that's operating it, and you can see here also an array of manual buttons and lights that actually sit in parallel with the main controller. This is what they did in the early days for these types of machines. You'll notice as well that I've got a magnetic overlay keyboard so that in this mode here it's uh, in a language that proprietary to Heidenhain. If I put this on and change one of the parameters in the machine parameters, I now have one that's ready to program in ISO G codes. It's uh, got a 4 kilowatt spindle motor and an 18 speed gearbox here in the Y slide. Um, one of the things about these machines is you'll notice that the cutter moves with the Y slide, but the other two slides move relative to the cutter, which makes it a little bit confusing as to X, Y and Z movements. So basically we use a right hand rule my thumb is pointing in the X positive, my index finger is sitting pointing in the Y positive, and the last finger is pointing upwards in the Z positive direction. In fact, the normal way of representing this is you always take it as if the cutter is the thing that's moving relative to the table, and the table's, let's say, stationary. So in order to go um, X positive, you actually have to shift this whole assembly, this table, negative. And similarly for the, y, uh, for the Z axis. Here you can see I've unbolted the vertical head here. That swings away. Four bolts, one, two, three, four here to loosen off to let this free. And now I've got here uh, the tool hold here, so I can put a tool, I won't do it, but I can put a tool in here and machine uh, from the Y axis. The problem with that is that when you get back to here and see how much that sticks out we look at the rotary table and the cutter now stuck out like so there's not a great deal of range to the center line of the rotary table so um, it's not that useful being able to machine in that position in that, from that axis now, a word about this controller. This Heidenhain controller is a retrofit. This machine was made about 1983 and it came with a Philips controller, which was really not all that good. The um, personal computers really hadn't got going then. So around about 1990, this was upgraded um, the CPU in this machine is a TI equivalent of about an IBM well, Intel 8286 from the second generation of home PCs and 
this happens to have got the latest, the last updates to firmware and software possible on this machine. So it was um, maybe 1991 for the last software and grade upgrade before they changed the model to a later one. And this is one of the first ones that really was capable of doing, in fact in this case five axes. I've only got four. Uh, you can put a, a servo on this vertical head and use that as a fifth, uh, fifth axis instead of uh, lifting this whole knee and rotary table up and down which weighs well, it has a mass of about 600 kilos so if you're peck drilling with a very small drill you're lifting 600 kilos up and down not exactly fast so if you were to get one of these machines with the Philips controller my suggestion would be to bite the bullet and look at the link that I've given elsewhere and upgrade the machine to uh, Linux CNC seems to be the way to go keeping all the servos that are correct for this machine rather than going to a Mac 3 and then you'll have the ability to have a computer that you can upgrade continuously from now on and probably running Windows 11 at the moment and also uh, Linux CNC will grow with all the um, you know open source guys working on it diligently so um, don't be too put off by by the machine not having the good process right it's still a big job doing Linux CNC and there's quite a, but there's quite a lot of people that can help you with it